by the time you guys are watching this video, I have been to all 50 states in less than eight months. Gosh, this is what I live for. Which puts me in the 2% of Americans who have been to all 50 states. I'm just like so grateful for this being my life. I'm so grateful for you guys. I'm so grateful for having such an awesome team behind me. And just wanna say thank you guys for tuning in and watching my life unfold. <laughs> I have like a list of things I need to cover because once I start talking, I will ramble. So I need to stick to this. As exciting and crazy as this past year was, I actually was struggling a lot. I feel like I'm on the verge of a mental breakdown like every single day. I just feel like I need to spend the next like two hours crying. <laughs> I mean, maybe. And I think you guys have seen all the positive things because we edit out all the negative parts. But in doing so, I realized I was basically not showing what really was happening. I realized I didn't know how to be authentic because they didn't understand who I was. There were a lot of lows throughout this journey. It was also fun too. Before I get into my mental journey, let me just explain to you the logistics of this entire series. The most recent video I posted was state number 23. That video was filmed back in May of this year. I would basically cram in as many states as I could in a 10 day span, one state a day. I guess the reasoning for the logistics being so rushed was really because I guess I knew that the faster I finished this project, the sooner I could kind of move on. On top of that, Chelsea has two kids at home, so I really didn't want to steal her from her family for longer than, you know, a week and a half. We were always on the go. Every single day, we have to do this. In and out. Just driving, barely sleeping. We were all still working our regular hours. We were just completely exhausted all the time. Oh my god, that's so early. It's six o'clock. <gasps> Morale is low. Ish. All right, I'm gonna go. Anybody want to come? I'm excited for Vermont. that you guys understand the stress. Let me explain to you how this whole series even came to be. I started this trip at the height of grieving my eight year relationship. This was the main inspiration that sparked the idea for the series. As I'm sure you've heard so many times by now, <laughs> I basically had no dating experience whatsoever. I did not realize I was basically speed dating first dates. And these were all blind dates. I feel like this is a feat that would be hard for someone who is good at dating. I just think I jumped right into an extremely hard journey while I was grieving, which I don't think was healthy. Whether I want to admit it or not, I still had so much love for Carter throughout a lot of this trip. I think I was moving from being in denial to just a deep sadness and loneliness, realizing that the one person I spent all this time with, that I would talk to all the time and lean on for support, was gone from my life. I haven't talked to Carter in so long, which is so weird for me, because I'm like, all I want to do is talk to someone, especially him, because he gets it, 
Yeah, well, it's like now you're going through the real breakup because this is not like this is sh- how it should be. It's not talking to them. I know. So, <laughs> but why? Because it's not healthy. We might not be together anymore, and we might not hang out and uh, make new memories and stuff. But like, there's still a piece of that person you just carry with you. I'm so sad. Like some days I feel so lost. Today I just feel extra dumb. I think those breakdowns are also attributed to other things in life, not just relationship focused. There's like so much pressure. Cause there is. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry. Sorry. I don't know, sometimes I feel like I have to put in the front and be put together, you know. Yeah. So I like try to be strong for people. So I think a combination of this grief mixed with the exhaustion, pressure, confusion, and just general low self-esteem, it just made me break down. After Virginia, the series was not the same for a while. I honestly stopped caring about structure because I was struggled between choosing to live in the moment and trying to capture the moment. I think you can really see this shift in the episodes where the first few had very high production value with structure and intent. Over time, the series evolved into something more and more casual. Sometimes it got so casual that we didn't even film the things we should have been filming. I missed having actual dates in some of the states because I was trying to find them the day of just due to being so busy and so exhausted. This next part is really when I realized that I stopped putting in effort. I basically stopped watching my videos before my team would post them and I never did that. That's just not how I run my production. The reason I didn't want to review them was because I just had such a hard time watching it. (sighs) I don't know. I just really struggled to watch them. It it was a lot of, I think, self-doubt, and every time I would watch them, I feel like I'd just be critiquing myself. And I really hate goodbyes. We're gonna be fine. We're gonna be out and about. I hate saying bye to people. Please don't ever say bye to me. (laughs) I just started to realize after meeting these new people and having a great time with them, I just realized how unrealistic actually finding love and someone to date in all the different states was. (laughs) I don't know what I was thinking. Realistically, I'm never going to see these guys again. And that just broke my heart because I... This is why I hate goodbyes. And on top of that, every single person I met on the road, just like knowing that I'd never see them again made me really depressed and made my commitment issues worse. People just come and go in your life and like, you don't just, it's like sad because you just don't know when you're ever gonna see them again. I didn't even realize at this time though, that the more dates I went on, the more and more detached I was from the idea of actually finding love. I stopped opening up to guys as easily because I just didn't want another goodbye to her. And I stopped investing my emotions into these dates and you can pretty much tell that on camera. While I did lose focus and sight on trying to find love, traveling with my team has led me to focusing on loving the people who are with me on this journey. So while I don't have like the one person I could pour my heart and soul into. I have all my friends that I can do that for, which made me really in a happy, sad way, where I'm like so grateful for my friends and my family and the people around me. It was honestly so much fun to travel with my team. I was basically just looking for love, but it was right in front of me the whole time. I kind of use them as a crutch though on this dating journey because I stopped focusing on the dates and more on experiences. 
and those experiences would just be way more fun with the girls. Oh, why is this so awesome? I feel so good for you. I know. <laughs> be free, Ashley. You're unleashed. I stopped caring about the dates because in my head they were kind of just for the content to keep the series rolling. And I almost felt like they were just getting in the way of our good time. I do want to share a crucial turning point that made me realize all of this. We were in Buffalo, New York, headed to Cleveland, Ohio. But around day 10 out of a 21 day trip, Ashley got sick and ended up in the ER. I don't know if it would be best for us to take her home, like all the way back, or if we should. We ended up spending 12 hours at the ER in the waiting room. And finally, at 2 a.m., Ashley got admitted. At this point, we were absolutely exhausted. Hannah was editing on the road eight hours a day and Chelsea really missed her kids after traveling for months. I told Hannah and Chelsea to fly home. Ashley ended up having to stay in the ER for seven days. Her boyfriend flew out to be with her and once he was there I had left. Oh man, what a doozy. Me and all my friends. Oh my god, I still have my hospital sticker on. It's just ironic because on my journey to find love and not be alone forever, I am now alone. <laughs> so I came to a crossroads because I wanted to finish what I started. Initially I was going to drive the truck back but after talking to my sister on the phone, she convinced me to finish this leg. She told me I should just still continue on my journey. So I agree. I really want to go to every state still. I don't have a camera crew. I think it's okay to continue on alone. I think it's almost more authentic. I'll just go out and try to find dates, meet people, have a good time. I just gotta figure out the logistics and figure out what states all I have left. I did the final 15 states all alone. It completely changed my perspective on life and this entire series. I ended up just having so much time to think. I did a lot of soul searching. I kept relying on so many other people that I lost trust in myself. When I was left alone and I had to trust myself, I realized that I actually am capable of so much more than I thought I was. <laughs> I think traveling this quickly and meeting this many people in such a short span of time is bound to make you grow. I'm making this video to not only share everything I've learned from this wild experience, but to let you know I'll no longer be posting this series on my channel. But I'm working on a massive project coming soon my entire experience of all 50 states in one video. I have put my heart and soul into this entire series and I want to do it justice now that I have the time and energy. A lot of what you guys have seen was edited to exclude reality, like Vinny, Greg, Noah, and the other guys who are all paid actors. Yeah, like today I'm taking Lizzie on a carriage tour. I'm Vinny Mazzoni. Today I'm taking Lizzie on a carriage ride. I'll be explaining every single detail of this entire journey and everything I learned after going on all these dates. So more updates on that will be coming soon. After this week, I'll be posting more raw and real vlogs weekly on my channel. And they're gonna be fun, fresh, exciting. I think 2024 is the year that we enter in a bunch of competitions, like a dodgeball contest or ski ball bowling maybe anyways let me know what you guys want to see because we can also just spend a day with me so if you guys aren't already subscribed make sure to subscribe and i love you guys you know i felt so freaking lonely last year and i realized it's because i wasn't filming in a way where I was talking to you guys. This is my last announcement. I have a podcast and I haven't really talked about it much because we've been working on it a lot behind the scenes because I want it to be perfect. So I figured what better way to be real and unfiltered than to live stream it. So we're gonna be live streaming it on Twitch every Thursday evening starting December 
14th, I think. Let me double check on that. Yep, December 14th. So you guys can hang out with us live. This is definitely meant for people my age, so viewer discretion is advised, but it's gonna be a guaranteed good time. If you can't make it, it's all good because we are gonna be posting the video version of it on our Cheeks podcast YouTube channel, and it's also gonna be available on Spotify, iTunes, Apple, I don't know, wherever you guys consume your podcast and since we're going to be posting a huge 50 days of 50 states video make sure to go get some merch thank you guys so much again for tuning into my life i will see you guys next week or on instagram or snapchat or tiktok make sure to subscribe love you guys <laughs>